was president in Brugava, whom I established a very close contact with. It was Hatim Sachi, the representative of the younger generation, with whom I met every week. And it was Bishop Artemi who just made a nasty snap today again. The first time I went to Garchanicha to go to Bishop Artemi, he told me, uh, he, he looked at me and he said, uh, I heard about you, General Reinhardt. You are the third generation general in one century to come to Serbia to exploit us and to, and, and, and to be nasty against us. I said, your grace, a great, great statement to become close friends for the next couple of months. Uh, Bishop Artemje was difficult and he represented the remaining Serbs uh, north of Mitrovica uh, in the vicinity of Skrzovska Kamenica and Strupce and by that time still within and around uh, Pristina was exchanged considerably. According to 1244 we were supposed to basically secure all these patrimonial sites which we did and I was very happy that nothing happened in this because this was world heritage as far as the quality is concerned. Very important for us was the legitimacy of our mission. And it was not only the United Nations and NATO, it was uh, 1244, it was the international law, and we came here on the chapter seven by the United Nations. That means that we were allowed to use all power which I had in my hand in order to ensure that our mission is being granted and that we don't have a situation as NATO had it before in, in, in Srebrenica, i.e. we were forced to look and to support and to defend everybody in the country who was attacked by anybody else. And I was very clear in my constant meetings with my commanders that I would punish every commander within whose command something would happen which would be alienated so I, uh, somehow close to what happened in Srebrenica. So 1244 was the Bible for us. The NATO Council and the European Union basically also agreed. The European Union was so important because it was their mission to rebuild the country and getting the money into the country. So at the time, I'm sorry, something. By the time I got uh, the command by General West Clark, I was given five orders by the NATO command. The, the gentleman here is Lord Robertson, the Secretary General, who basically visited me, or us, rather often. The first mission which we got was a very simple one, to prevent the Yugoslav forces and the Yugoslav special police, which were the worst guys in the country, to come back. Milosevic was on the air almost every day, saying, we'll reconquer Kosovo. And for us, it was necessary to tell them, if you come, it will be a very bloody battle for you. So we deployed with iron, with a very iron fist, and to show the people of Kosovo that we are there to defend them, the same way as we would have defended NATO in Germany or anybody else, any place else. And we had constant exercises showing to the local population what we were available to do and to show them, we're here for you. But uh, we also invited the chief of the Serb army, General Marjanovic, regularly, and telling him, if you want to come, you can come, but it will be difficult for you. I invited him to all my exercises. And the first time he said, you are not entitled to do this, because this is secure uh, uh, business, and, 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 and you are not allowed to bring me into your own headquarters. I said, no, why don't you come? Then you know what you're up to. And I tell you, we know our job. And after the second meeting, he said, you don't have to invite me anymore. I will not come because I know I have no chance against you. So this was a little psychology, psychological warfare. But I had them uh, in all my major uh, exercises included, and also officers, third officers up to colonel level, in order to just to show them our, about our capabilities. The second mission was to ensure security. When we took over, I said it was chaos and anarchy. We had up to 50 people killed a day because they belonged to a different 
ethnic groups. You see here, every of these red stars on the 15th of July is somebody being killed because he belonged to some ethnic group. We had a high, reason, a high uh, group of, uh, of a high number of arson, of kidnapping, and it took us until the middle of October that we went down to some kind of a normalcy. But it took us very hard because the, 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 the intention to kill other people was very high. One of the most impressive, negatively impressive thing was on the 28th of November, which is your flag day. And I was told by NATO that I have to make a lot of secure, uh, security, uh, install, bring up a lot of security installations because it might be a very dangerous day because of national ambitions and all that. And I said, no, 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 it's not necessary. We don't need this with the Kosovo Wars. They are so mature right now, it will not happen. In the evening, at 11 o'clock, I called my boss in, in, in uh, Belgium, General Clark, and I said, everything went fine. And at that time, somebody came in and he said, sir, we just had a very bad incident in downtown uh, Pristina. A professor with his wife and his sister was driving in a car, and they got lost. And they asked somebody where to go, and they spoke, yes, sir. And the professor was drawn out of the car and shot, uh, and the two ladies were almost uh, beaten to death. This was a very, very bad incident. But unfortunately, things like this happen, and we didn't have enough police. Today, you have a Kosovo police force. We started building up the uh, academy in Wichita, but we only had the international police, called the Coca-Cola police, because most of the guys didn't leave their red and white cars because they were afraid uh, to be out, and especially all those from black from the countries in Africa did not want to leave the car because it was a cold in winter time. So, so we had to fill in with our forces, even so we were, have not been given the mission to do police force, to be police service, and I had a strategy meeting together with the police commissioner to see how we could work very closely with the police in order to prevent a vacuum. And the worst thing in the vacuum was that we had no detention facilities. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen to build up the country without law and order will not work. This is one of the most important ingredients, but if you have no way to punish the guys whom you call. And it was the, uh, a time of about 36 minutes when the bad guys were released again from the police because we could not keep them. Then you can imagine how bad it was also for our soldiers to go after the bad guys, turn to the police, waiting for 30 minutes and then the bad guys came out again. So we took this mission even so, we were not allowed to do that. And we had our checkpoints, and five out of six soldiers were constantly out in the villages patrolling. And we were patrolling also the Serbs in the UNHCR buses. So they could go into Serbia proper to see a doctor, to see a lawyer, to go shopping or so, to speak with other people in the same language. And even so, we had convoying them. It happened that a bus on the 3rd of February was shot by an RPG and we had six ladies and gentlemen being killed in that bus who were just coming back from shopping. And this, I think, is not shopping. Shopping, this is shocking if, you, if something like this happens to you. Nevertheless, we basically managed to get down the murder rates almost to the level of Moscow and we were trying to get closer to Berlin. Uh, but you see it from where we started and this was a very, very bad thing. The, the third mission was to demilitarize the Uchika. This was, I think, one of the biggest problems which we had to solve because the members of the Uchika felt like they are the heroes who liberated Kosovo. And the, and, and the population saw them the same way. And here we were telling them, no hero anymore, no soldiers anymore. You go now in the TMK and you work helping to improve the infrastructure and other things in your country. I had very, very tough discussion with General Chico, who shortly before New Year's Eve said, I quit, and he went back to Sadar, and Ramush Haradinai took over, 
uh, the, the head of the TNK in order to get this into the proper channels. And I think the first time the TNK was officially working within Kosovo was after New Year's night, after the Millennium Night, when they cleared the major roads in Pristina because no one was high like this and no car, car could work. And the people were there applauding their, their, their Uchika, former Uchika friends that they were doing that. So in the meantime, I think uh, uh, the Kosovo Protection Corps uh, has grown to some 3,500 people. In the meantime, most of these are not Kosovo Protection Corps, but trying to go into the uh, Kosovo Defense Forces. Cooperation with UNBIC, United Nations Mission in Kosovo. My counterpart was Werner Kushin. You know him as a former Foreign Secretary uh, in uh, France. When we met for the first time in Heidelberg, he looked at me and he said, General Reinhardt, you have to know I don't like generals. He is a leftist. He's basically stormed the Sorbonne as a student leader. I don't like Germans. In particular, I don't like German generals. I said, I hope we become friends all the time because we have to work together. And we became close friends and we still are. So what we did at the beginning of our tenure, that we built up an interim, a joint interim administration. This looks and sounds very normal. But we were fighting with the United Nations like nuts because they wanted to have an interim government made up of foreigners superimposed on Kosovo and to stay for two or three years to run the country. A very similar way the Americans did it with Paul Bremer in, in Baghdad where it did not work. We said we have to include all the key people in Kosovo to know what they want us to do and to basically come up with political solutions which fit their requirements rather than their. And we had all the, the heads of the four pillars, uh, uh, Dennis McNamara from the United Nations uh, uh, UNHCR, who was responsible for all these many, many uh, refugees, Tom Koenigs, who was responsible for police and, 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 and for the local popula uh, politician, uh, OSCE, responsible for institution and press, and the European Union, responsible for reconstruction. This European Union was the weakest point in the whole country. The weakest point, totally unorganized, they didn't get the money, and the best man of those four, Dennis. Uh, who was, who was responsible for uh, the EU left after five months, totally frustrated. He said, I will not do this anymore. And it took three months for the European Union to find a, a deputy, uh, a successor for it. So at the end, Kofi Annan basically accepted our solution of a joint group. And also the European Union said yes. And the first time Solana came and visited me as the representative of the European Union. He said, General Reinhardt, what can I do for you to basically help you in your position? I said, sir, I need money. We have no budget. We run the country with one, without one Deutschmark and not one Diener. No, you cannot run a country like this without money. And then he basically elaborated that he could not give us money because the provisions of the European Union didn't see any possibility to support a country which, not, which was not a member of the European Union. And he elaborated on this with Chris Patton, who joined him. And then I said, sir, you're stealing my time. I'm not interested why it's not possible. And I showed him the door. The next morning, I got a telephone call from him. He said, I was never so badly mistreated like by you. I said, sir, I really apologize, but you know, you put me in a very awkward position here as Commander K4, if we cannot deliver any goods to the local population, we become an occupation army with all the negative trends. Afterwards, he tried to help and he helped, but much more important was the President of the United States who came about a week later. And again, he said he wanted to help me. And I said, I need money. And his question was, how much is it? And I told him, I need a half billion US dollars. That's enough or run Kosovo for a year. He said, that's a lot of money. I said, no, sir. 
with all respect, I contradict, you know, NATO bombarded Serbia and Kosovo for 78 days. Every